When you're trying to wean the world off fossil fuels and onto cleaner, greener forms of energy and transportation, you need a cleaner, greener way to store that energy. And usually, at least for now, electrochemical batteries have been the first choice. In the 41 years that I've been alive, we've seen incredible progress in electric vehicle battery technology, migrating from lead acid batteries through to nickel cadmium, nickel metal hydride, sodium sulfur, and of course, lithium iron, the current favored go-to when it comes to battery life, energy density, robustness, and manufacturing cost. Of course, what we know about lithium ion batteries, a term which encompasses a whole slew of different cell chemistries and designs, has dramatically changed in the last decade. Batteries being made today for use in electric cars are multiple generations improved from the technology that was being used in the very first modern electric cars as produced 10 years ago. They are cheaper to produce, they have better thermal stability, and in some cases, use far less cobalt and other difficult or controversial to mine materials. So far this year, Tesla's Battery Day held back in September, and GM's newly announced Ultium battery pack design have given us an exciting look into the future of lithium ion technology. GM, of course, is responsible for a new modular battery pack design complete with wireless battery management and future-proof upgradable architecture, while Tesla's recent Battery Investor Day laid out an impressive roadmap that could reduce the total cost of producing finished lithium ion batteries by an insane 69%. But this week, another event happened that really isn't getting as much attention as it should. A presentation from QuantumScape, a California battery startup backed by both Bill Gates and Volkswagen that is working on the next big thing after lithium ion batteries solid state batteries. And just like Tesla's battery day earlier this year, the presentation, nearly 90 minutes of Zoom streamed goodness, will likely fly over the heads of many people, including myself. Yet the implications of that presentation, called the QuantumScape Solid State Battery Showcase, could dramatically change the way we use electric vehicles and frankly, batteries in other things. And given the people involved at the company at a management level, not to mention the super team of investors and board members associated with the company, which includes, in addition to Volkswagen and Bill Gates, former CTO at Tesla, J.B. Straubel, John Doerr from Kleiner Perkins, Continental and SAIC Motors in China, well, it's a big deal. And this frankly tells me we should totally be paying attention. During the showcase, CEO of QuantumScape, Jagdeep Singh, and his illustrious team of colleagues, who include academics from places like Stanford and Berkeley universities, not to mention the University of Vienna, detailed some of the advancements that the nearly 10-year-old company has made in the field of solid-state batteries. Developments that bring faster charging, longer lasting, more stable battery packs for electric vehicles far closer to commercial reality than they have previously been. So without further ado, let's get into this. Unlike most batteries, which use a liquid or a gel-based electrolyte, that's the medium through which ions pass on their way between the cathode and anode and back, solid-state batteries use, you've guessed it, a kind of solid electrolyte. Because of their construction, solid-state batteries are not only more energy-dense than lithium-ion batteries, but are far more chemically stable. They aren't anywhere near as flammable as traditional lithium-ion batteries, and by that, I mean they're much more resistant to short circuits caused by puncture damage. They don't suffer the same level of dendritic buildup that lithium-ion cells do. And to all intents and purposes, while they have historically needed to be kept at a very narrow thermal band, tend not to heat up the same way that lithium-ion batteries do. Solid-state batteries already exist. They're used in some medical devices, for example, due to their stability. I'm pretty sure I have one right here in my body. But when it comes to their use in electric vehicles, there have been some pretty big roadblocks to their commercial use. First, they have traditionally had issues with lifespan, only being good for a few hundred charge or discharge cycles. 
which obviously in an electric vehicle is absolutely no good. I mean, assuming the car stays on the road for 10 years or more, any battery would require an ability to withstand maybe seven to a thousand charge discharge cycles before considered suitable. Next, there's the issue of current density. That's power into and out of the cell. While solid state batteries have traditionally had incredible energy density, meaning they can store a lot of energy per unit mass, they haven't been good at getting that power into or out of the battery very quickly. In an electric vehicle application, that's essential for good performance. Then there's the ability to function in a variety of different temperatures, and the ability to operate at a temperature that doesn't require insanely high temperatures to keep the battery functional. But QuantumScape says it solved all of these hurdles and has the data to prove it. During its presentation, don't worry, I will link to it below, QuantumScape's team detail what they've accomplished, which is an ultra-thin cell design that uses pure lithium at the negative side when the cell is charged and nickel-manganese-cobalt oxide at the positive side. In between the two, there's a flexible ceramic separator that allows ions to pass freely between the two terminals, but prevents any kind of lithium dendritic buildup. You can think of dendrites as little spikes of metal that form on the anode and have the potential to cause a short circuit, stopping them from forming by having a material that's strong enough to prevent their growth while simultaneously allowing ions to pass through is a bit of a challenge. Making it flexible? That's even tougher. Unlike regular batteries where ions pass between anode and cathode during charge and discharge cycles, this particular battery is technically anode-free because during discharge, all of the lithium that occupies the space of a traditional anode migrates over to the cathode. Eventually, there's technically no physical anode material at the anode current collector when the battery has discharged because all of that lithium is now at the cathode. In its place, the space originally occupied by that lithium is squished like an accordion, but when you charge the cell, those ions pass back through the ceramic separator and fill back up that vacant space in order to form the anode. That space, by the way, is about the thickness of a human hair, showing just how incredible this particular battery cell design is. And no, I am sorry, I don't know what the chemical makeup of this ceramic separator is. It's the result of $300 million and nearly 10 years of research and development and is essentially QuantumScape's special source. In its current form, the test cells QuantumScape has been building is about the same physical width and height as a playing card, but it's less than the thickness of a human hair. And when QuantumScape starts to commercialize cells together in modules, each will be about the size of a full deck of cards from top to bottom, with as many as 100 cells sandwiched in between. QuantumScape's cell technology has proven itself incredibly capable when it comes to charging, again, thanks in large part to that special source proprietary ceramic separator, a test cell measuring 70 millimeters by 85 millimeters in surface area with zero excess lithium, meaning there's no lithium left at the anode when it's fully discharged, was able to achieve an 80% state of charge from empty in less than 15 minutes. For those feeling nerdy, there was also a very interesting test shown at around the 25 minute mark in the QuantumScape presentation, in which the company demonstrated that 15 minute to 80% rate, equivalent to 4C, was nowhere near the maximum charge rate that could actually be achieved. Cells were tested well beyond that, showing that it was possible to charge at up to 25C, or two minutes from zero to 80%, without causing long-term damage to the cell. Of course, we should also look at battery life, which has been another big problem for solid state batteries to date. QuantumScape says that it's been testing its cells through more than 800 charge discharge cycles and is continuing to test them now. And those cells have managed to retain 80% of their original capacity over time. Something it says is equivalent to 240,000 miles travelled in a theoretical electric car fitted with a 100 kilowatt hour QuantumScape pack. Next, there is temperature stability. 
Through testing, QuantumScape says it's proven that its batteries are not only temperature stable, meaning they can operate from Arctic temperatures all the way up to the extreme heats of the tropics, and being a solid state battery, the lithium anode is chemically stable, even when it's at the kind of temperatures where lithium turns into a molten material. Based on my limited knowledge of physics and chemistry, this tells me that batteries are less likely to combust even when they're subjected to an external source of high temperatures, such as when a car is caught in a building fire, for example. So far, QuantumScape's data is impressive and irrefutable. It's opened up its data to peer review, and so far, so good. It's proving that it has gravimetric energy density that's nearly twice that of the best lithium ion cells on the market today, and a volumetric energy density that's at least 30 to 40% higher than today's cells. But just like Tesla's battery day was presented with a massive caveat, so too is QuantumScape's latest achievements. There is a massive gap between something working in a laboratory and something working up in a massively scaled environment. Figuring out how to safely mass produce cells and test them, how to ensure everything works as it should, and testing in real world vehicles still lies ahead. For now though, the holy grail of solid state batteries seems closer than it ever was. And if QuantumScape delivers, it could not only be a breakthrough for the automotive world, but for every other application that currently uses lithium ion batteries today. And that, even with the caveats in mind, is epic. Here's hoping that the next stage goes according to plan. And don't worry, we'll keep you posted. That's it for today. As always, thanks to the folks on my right for being our $15 to $49 a month Patreon supporters. Special thanks to our $50 a month Patreons, that's John Lyons, Regine Fellows, Jeffrey Songstar, and Tesla in the Gong. And our deepest gratitude to our $100 a month Patreon supporters, Marcel Ward, Reggie Watts, JP Fagerback, Sean Ueda, Will Graylin, and Ian. You can join all of these amazing people and become a supporter yourself by following the links below or use one of them to send us a donation through Ko-fi or Bitcoin. There's also a link to our free Discord server, which costs nothing to join. So sign up and come and chat with the team. And if you're in need of some swag, do check out our store over at Redbubble. We've got some great ideas. And although the holidays, well, you're probably too late for getting a holiday gift, you're still going to be supporting the channel if you decide to get something. After the names have finished scrolling, you'll see a suggestion for a new video. So give it a check out if you haven't yet. And I'll be back very soon. Thanks for joining me. And as always, keep evolving. <laughs> <laughs>